Hey, hey everybody, what's going on? Today, we're going to talk to you guys about single element drum level control and three element drum level control. So, hang out, check it out. Hey everybody, this is Jeremy, the Boiler Boss. How y'all doing today? I'm going to go over some drum control logic with you guys so hopefully in your quarantine you had nothing better to do which if you're like me you're absolutely running out of things to do and uh, good because uh, I want to share a little knowledge with everybody why not right well let's get started okay so today we'll talk about single element and three element and first thing you want to know is in single element all we're literally doing is controlling liquid level looking only at liquid level so this is a drum Here's the water level. We're going to be looking from the top surface to wherever the bottom tap is that you're measuring the liquid level from. Super simple. All right, so in this strategy, all right, you're going to have your drum level transmitter down here. See that? That's your drum level transmitter. And basically, that feeds what is known as the PV into the PID controller. So if you remember from the last discussion, this is the SAMA symbol for a PID controller. PID, Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. All right, so in the single element strategy, the level transmitter, okay, it's going to feed in as the PV to the PID controller. You're going to have an operator set point that is going to feed into the drum level controller. See that? Set point. And then the output, in this case, in single element, is going to run straight to the feed water control valve. Okay, and you'll notice right here it says T for transfer function, single element. So whenever the single element option is selected, it's going to instead transfer the output through that F of X straight to the feed water valve. Woohoo! Simple, right? Single element, so easy. Super, super simple. Set point, level, valve, open or close. Now remember, in a drum level control strategy, as PV goes up, CV goes down. As PV goes down, CV needs to go up. If you do it the opposite, you're going to run out of water or overfill the drum. Don't forget that I told you that. Don't forget that I told you that. All right, we're going to erase all ink on the slide. So everybody's thinking, like, why would we ever quit doing single element? It is so fucking easy. Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because single element is great as long as the load demand of the burner doesn't change quickly and as long as the steam demand doesn't change quickly either. So basically if the operators are really nice guys and they ramp the burner up very very slowly and the steam load is very very steady then chances are single element's gonna work just fine. Alright but then you go to that place where the liquid level is always changing because the steam demand is always changing. The burner is always firing up and down. There's a lot of shrink and swell on the drum. And the guys at the plant are like, ah, what do we do? We can't control level. The boiler keeps tripping on low water and alarming on high water. Ah, help me. Well, good. I've got good news for you. If they don't have three element control, you need to recommend it. And here's what you're going to recommend. And if they do have three element control, you need to get in there and figure out what device is failing the three element strategy and causing the level to be erratic and how you can fix it. Could be PID tuning, could be installation of the drum level transmitter, could be installation of the steam flow transmitter, could be installation of the feed water flow transmitter. Any of the three, if it's not working, is really going to screw up this three element drum control strategy and you're probably better off just leaving it in single element until you figure it out. All right, but because you hang out with me, you're gonna freaking figure it the F out as we like to say it. Because we're experts of FSO, figuring shit out. All right, so three element. Here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna have the drum level, just like in single element, okay? And you're gonna have a set point still coming to the controller. So you have your user set point and you have your drum level PV. Difference is that output Okay, this is usually going to end up getting scaled, so or not, whatever. Either these are all in percent, or they're going to be in you know pounds per hour or something. But it's probably going to get scaled into like let's say pounds per hour. We're going to take the drum level output, all right, and we're going to add it to the steam flow. Okay, so steam flow is going to come into a multiplier. 
Now you can put a feed forward gain, which essentially will take away from the steam flow or add to the steam flow value, or you can leave it one. Sometimes I've found that not incorporating the feed forward gain and simply just using steam flow works good too. Uh, but you know, case by case basis, guys. Case by case basis, guys. All right. So the drum level output, which is usually scaled to pounds per hour or some value, some control engineer dreams up, whatever is going to get added to this uh, steam flow value times your feed forward gain okay and then that value is now going to become the set point of your feed water PID controller now now think about that why did we scale it to pounds per hour well what do you think your feed water flow value coming into the PID is your feed water flow is coming into the feed water PID controller as pounds per hour, right? Or gallons per hour, whatever, whatever they're using. Okay? So in our three element strategy, we're looking at drum level, steam flow, and feed water flow. Okay? Three element. Hmm. Wonder where they came up with that name. Oh, the three elements, drum, steam, and feed water. Woohoo! Alright, so we scale to pounds per hour, so that way we're kind of working with apples and apples, not apples and oranges. I don't know if you've ever been like, I want an apple and somebody gave you an orange and you're like, it's an orange, like, well, it's round, but it's not an apple. So apples to apples or oranges to oranges, you pick. Either way, scale it. So what happens here that makes three element any better than single element? Think of it like this. Um, if all of a sudden the drum level kind of goes high, right? Let's say we take a big steam demand and all of a sudden the steam value starts showing a lot of flow all of a sudden and let's say the drum level goes a little bit high okay so initially in single element if there was a swell well, what would happen is the output from the drum controller would start to go down but we know we don't want it to do that because we know that the swell is superficial right we know that we're pulling pounds and pounds of steam out of the drum why do we want the level control to stop filling the drum. We don't, right? Because if a thousand pounds leave the drum, we need a thousand pounds of water going into the drum. One pound of steam, one pound of water. You gotta have it. Otherwise, you're gonna run out of water. So what tends to happen in single element strategies when there's a large steam demand and you get that swell, the drum level control says, nah, I don't need water. And it closes off the feed water valve. Problem is, is now you've taken all that water out of the freaking drum in the form of steam and you haven't added any back so once they throw all that steam back the level is going to be super freaking low you're probably going to trip on low drum level so so three elements says uh-uh i see that the output from the drum level is going down but i see that the steam value from the steam flow value is going up so it's going to be continually adding that steam flow now to that drum level output to keep a a higher set point or a relatively stable set point let's say coming to the feed water flow transmitter okay and then as that margin widens between uh, you know drum level and steam flow and and then as that margin widens between set point to the feed water controller and feed water flow coming back to the controller it's actually going to keep the feed water valve kinda creeping open in any and so you're gonna be looking at this going what the hell the drum level is swelling, my feed water valve is opening. Remember, you're, you got to remember that you've got to keep the same amount of water going in as the same amount of steam going out. If you don't, you're going to run out of level. So that's okay. So I always tell people, look, when we're taking a big load swing, it's not abnormal for the level to give you maybe a high alarm uh, during a large steam pool and sometimes a low alarm during a steam send back, okay? And so what happens there is we're going to keep water going in when we know it's an artificial swell and we're going to stop water from going in when we know it's an artificial shrink based on steam draws and steam pushbacks from the process okay and that's it so so here we take the drum level plus the steam flow becoming the set point of the feed water PID controller the feed water value in is the PV and that's going to simply open and close the feed water valve to keep the drum level maintained. Now without that, like I said, what would happen is we get those artificial shrinks and swells and the drum output in single element would be counter to the drum level. So if the shrink 
happened, the drum would start overfilling and then we'd have a high level once everything settled out. And then when the drum swelled artificially, we'd have a really low level once everything settled out. So the idea is to kind of maintain or increase flow to the drum you know, during large steam demands because we know that once everything lines out, we, we don't want to have a major deficiency between feed water flow and steam flow. So, hey guys, look, hopefully I was able to articulate that in a way you guys can understand. Uh, because, you know, oftentimes, more, more often than not, we're not out here, you know, trying to explain this on a daily basis. So everything that's locked up in this crazy brain, sometimes I have a hard time articulating that. But hopefully you get the idea and you kind of understand what's going on. Um, so if you notice here, you know, we got these T's it's called transfer functions. So if you want to get a little more involved in SAMA, go ahead and get to know that T transfer function. And that basically just means if some digital input to the controls is other than, you know, what it's supposed to be right now, it's going to transfer things around, whether that's an output or a set point or whatever. Okay. And then again, you know, you see these, these are, these are low limiters and high limiters, right? So less than, greater than, just like you learn in school. Um, ink, dink is pretty self-explanatory, right? Increment, decrement. Um, and then again, the addition uh, symbol here. And then what you notice here is you have an f of x, okay? You're like, man, what do I need that for? A lot of times, what you're going to find in drum level applications is that if you have an f of x curve, you're going to have an x value here and you have a y value here, right? And this is simply going to be usually demand and this is going to be like, let's say, valve position. Okay? Now, usually these are going to be linear. So if this is 0, this is 0. If this is 10, this is 10. If this is 20, this is 20. Okay, so normally you can just linearize these curves and forget all about it. But what happens if the guy who sized the feed water valve got you something other than, you know, a linear valve, right? So what, what, what tends to happen when you need that is you'll see if this is the valve curve, okay? So like let's say this is uh, 0 to 100 and this is like let's say this is percent open okay and this is a hundred here and let's say this is flow sometimes you need to characterize that valve right so if, if it was a nice linear valve then you don't really need to characterize it but like let's say it's a, a you know quick opening valve or something okay so if you see here, you know, 0 to 100% open, you don't get much flow difference, right, like from here and beyond, right? So even though you're going more open, you may not be getting much more flow difference. Let's say it's a valve that's kind of like this. Okay. So from here, you're not getting much flow difference here on the curve, but you're getting a lot more flow from here and beyond. So these characterizers, they really help you out in the sense that when you have a valve curve that is more like this or like this is going to help you get better, you know, uh, feed water control over the valve based on where you're at on the the firing rate of the burner versus what you want, you know, the valve to be at to give you the appropriate flow. So it's good to know that because what will happen if you don't characterize it properly and you're in that situation where you're on these weird curves like that is you're going to end up like, you know, from here to here, you're, you're going to start losing level, right, because it's taking a long time for the valve to get open enough to really give you the flow. Whereas here, you're going to start getting a shit ton of level because a little bit of opening is giving you way too much. So you really need to characterize valves, uh, you know, when they have trim characteristics similar to this in the valve. And again, if it's mostly linear, right, then you're good if you're somewhere like this. But if you're way out here on these curves, get that shit characterized. All right, man, so that's your quick one element and three element rundown by me, Jeremy, a.k.a. The Boiler Boss. Find us on car on uh, Twitter at EST Carbon, at EST Carbon. Find us on YouTube at Carbon Kings, EST.2020. 
And you can always follow me at LinkedIn. Uh, just look up Jeremy Boiler Boss. You'll find me. All right, y'all. Without further ado, we're going to end that and call it a day.